here's a topic from chemistry that we can better understand perhaps by looking at something from physics, standing waves. Well, let's take a look. The photoelectric effect demonstrated that light can behave like particles. So what are we talking about? A continuous wave. Now we have photons. We're just talking about the light being broken up into chunks and that would be considered a particle of light. So a continuous wave now is acting like separate particles. Louis de Broglie proposed that electrons could behave like waves, probability waves. Well, that's his formula. You take Planck's constant and you divide by the momentum and you get the wavelength. Momentum is a mass times a velocity. The bigger the velocity, the shorter this wavelength. There's experimental evidence that supported that theory. Electrons passing through a double slit formed an interference pattern. Now that's really weird. The electrons go through these two openings. Now this is like a diffraction grating, just two openings. You would expect the electrons to go through one opening or the other. And then there would be two dots on the wall where the electrons came through one opening or the other. But they didn't. They actually formed an interference pattern. There was a principal maximum. There were a bunch of electrons that showed up right in the middle. And then there was a first maximum on each side. And then beyond that, there would even be a second maximum. This is an example of particles behaving like waves. Now we don't normally see that on our scale. I can't throw tennis balls through a window and tennis balls through another window and find an interference pattern from that. That's because the scale is too large. On the microscopic scale, the subatomic scale, it does work that way. Electrons can behave like waves and that's the experiment that demonstrates it. The wave nature of electrons explained why electrons could only be in discrete energy levels in an atom. They form standing waves. Well, we know about standing waves. Let's take a look at the standing wave idea. If I have a string, it can form a standing wave where we have a crest and a trough. And a moment later, we have a trough and a crest. And each antinode is oscillating up and down like this. And there's a node here and a node here and a node here. If we take a look at the string and wrap it around in a circle, we can get a diagram that looks like this. We have a crest and a trough. A little while later, we have a crest on this side and a trough on that side. This would be if we have one standing wave in a circle. If we have n equals two, we have two waves that are standing on our string. Well, this would be two waves standing in a circular loop. Crest, trough, crest, trough. And it oscillates back and forth between the red dotted line and the black solid line. If you'd like to see this in animation, there's a video I have posted on this. Now we have n equals three. Three full standing waves, and they form a complete loop. Where there's a node is where an electron could not be found in this model. Now these are only two dimensional models. In real life, the electrons are moving in three dimensions and the model is more complicated but there are places in these 3D orbitals where we can't find an electron. And that's because there's a node in the three-dimensional standing wave. N equals four. Well, what do I have over here? N equals 4.5. That's just not gonna work. Because as you can see, by the time you come around that extra half wave, it doesn't join up. It, the pattern, if it continued, you'd see that it's gonna cancel out. Crests would be on top of troughs. So some standing wave patterns just can't exist. So every time we increase N, we're going up by one full wave and we're getting a higher energy level. So in classical physics, the electrons move in these circles. In quantum mechanics, we have standing wave patterns. This is the idea of the cloud. Now, how do we know this for sure? The energy levels of electrons and atoms was observed in the bright line spectra of the gas discharge tube. Well, we can energize gas inside a glass tube. This is an AC generator generating current that's going to cause the electrons in the gas to jump up, then they jump down and they give off light. That light is being shown going through a prism. The prism creates a spectrum. Notice it's not a continuous spectrum. We only have certain colors which represent certain energies. 
Well, where are those energies coming from? From the electrons and the gas jumping down. This spectrum tells us about the energy levels that the electrons can jump through in the gas. So notice that we don't have any energy level available, only certain jumps can occur. So an electron that gets excited from the second orbital jumps up here. Then it can jump down or it could jump down all the way. And that gives us different colors. Well, there is a definite problem with the structure of an atom using circular orbits. And it's this. An electromagnetic wave is created whenever an electron is accelerated. If we accelerate it up and down and up and down, the wave is generated and it takes away energy from the electron. If we want to keep this up, we have to keep wiggling it. It's usually an AC generator that's going to keep making this thing go up and down. Well, the electron in this circle has an acceleration. It's not tangential, it's a centripetal acceleration. If the electron has a centripetal acceleration, it should emit light. Well, this was a big problem for the classical theory of physics because an electron doesn't lose energy if it's just going in this orbit. Well, the problem was solved with the standing wave idea. When you have standing wave electrons, they're not really moving in a circular orbit. They're just standing in a pattern that exists. That eliminated the need for a centripetal acceleration and therefore the energy is not radiated continuously. If that was the case, the electrons would spiral inward and go into the nucleus. That was predicted by classical theory, but obviously it didn't happen that way. So quantum mechanics saved the day. So here's the link to the video where I have my computer, the old computer, running a simulation that I wrote that shows the standing waves of the electrons in a two-dimensional model. What do you get when you combine the concepts of energy, waves, and particles? But let's walk through it. You know that E equals HF. That's from the photoelectric effect. You know that velocity equals frequency times wavelength. Well, we've been doing that for a while now. And that's the speed of light is equal to frequency times wavelength. So we can solve for frequency and write C over lambda. Now we can put that in for F. So we're going to write H times C over lambda. Now, the de Broglie equation, we have lambda equals h over the momentum. So I can write h is equal to lambda times the momentum. Just bring the momentum over to here. Well, now I can get rid of h. I come down here. E is equal to lambda times the momentum times c over lambda. Well, you can see that there's a lambda on the bottom and a lambda on top. They cancel out. And this is momentum times c. Well, momentum is mass times velocity. But what if that velocity was the speed of light? Put mc in for p. Ah, oh, look what we get. The famous Einstein equation, E equals mc squared. What this tells us is that matter, even at rest, has a energy equal to that mass in kilograms times the speed of light squared. Matter can be converted into energy, and energy can be converted into matter. 